Hello. This lesson is for how to pull inventory out of SAP. Simple, like as you learned in school and your whole life. Uh, this is a building block for future knowledge of how to extract that extract data uh, out of SAP. So let's begin. First, we're going to go to SAP, of course. Uh, up here, you can type all these transactions I have here. These are my favorites. Uh, if you don't have those, um, and you you probably don't if you're just starting out, but you can type them up here in the in the top corner. So MB52 uh, is a transaction you'll need for pulling inventory out of SAP. You can type it here. You see my mouse, or I have a favorite here. Either way, it works just fine. So. We're going to go into MB52, and it will always come loaded with data. I don't want to say always, but usually. So first thing to do is get rid of your old data. And this is a great little example here. This one came loaded with a plant, right? And sometimes you think you delete this plant, and now you have a blank working field. However, if you click on this yellow multiple selection arrow, you'll see that there could be a list here. So in this particular case, this top one could have been a 3175 followed by another site, followed by another site, followed by another site. So all these things could have been listed there. And if you just deleted the first one, you wouldn't see the rest, right? So I put those in and now you see what I mean. You just see the one, okay? Those are the DCs that we're gonna pull our inventory from uh, within Unilever. Uh, material type is going to be FERT. FERT is really German for finished, so finished goods. Uh, your other option would be RAW, uh, which is ROH. And if I can probably just show you, see the ROH, uh, what SAP will do is, is save recent entries. Um, it's up to you what you're looking for for this exercise. We don't want to see anything that has a zero stock value. Uh, it's a, it'll reduce the data set that I'm running, so it won't take so much time. Um, and we just we don't need anything else. Uh, it is important to note here that this non-hierarchical representation is checked and not just the hierarchical representation. It'll just give you funny results, and you'll think you did something wrong where you did it right, but you just don't have the correct button selected. That's pretty typical throughout SAP. Um, a lot of it has to do with layout and what you're trying to pull in. It, it tends to all be there. You just need to find it. So for this one, uh, this is a layout that I've created uh, for quality, uh, one we use. Uh, you could choose any layout you want. Um, we can get back into that at a later time of uh, choosing different layouts, setting them up, etc. cetera. Uh, or you could always you know, reach out to me. My name is Herb Lynn, H-E-R-B-L-I-N-N, -N, at Unilever. And uh, you, know, you can always shoot me a question. So your DCs are in. If you've got your finished good checked off, we don't want to see zero stock lines. We have this checked off. That's the layout we want. Here's how you execute it, right up here. And then the clock starts turning. Uh, and it's thinking, right? That's what it's gonna do. I could um, pause the video and we here can- Here are some videos we and video I found on the web. It. That's great, that's what I need. Mean. But we're just gonna let it run. I shouldn't take a ton of time, but we'll see. Now that you have a video, you can just fast forward <laughs> to the end uh, and you don't have to wait. I'm just waiting. I don't want to disrupt the video. Uh, actually, you can see how long it takes sometimes. Uh, the more information you're requesting, the longer it's going to take to run. Uh, and uh, SAP could get bogged down with tons of users, tons of requests, and so forth. And like anything else, it has its good days and bad days. 
So we just have to uh, to bear with it. Um, while we're waiting for this to run, I'm looking at my screen and I'm trying to think of anything else I could point out. Um, you'll have a line here for your batches. If you have specific batches that you want your inventory back from, you, you would do that here, um, obviously in the batches. Same thing. Uh, and I can't really show you with the, uh, the blue circle there. It uh, won't let you do anything else until it stops running. Uh, but same thing, you can click on this yellow arrow and then put in, you know, 5, 10, 20, 100 batches, whatever you want. Uh, same with the material. If you have a specific material or materials, uh, same. It's all the same here, too. You one material here, uh, or if you click the yellow arrow, you can put in a whole list of materials. Uh, storage location, that gets to be pretty specific. Uh, finish good storage within Unilever is typically uh, storage location 1,000. Your raw materials will have different storage locations. Um, and if you really want to get down to that level, uh, you're also going to need to be in close contact with the DCs to see what they use for storage locations. Uh, again, finish good is typically 1,000. Um, but for raw material, uh, it could be, you know, 900, 500. Uh, it's going to depend on the DC. Uh, purchasing group, material group. Again, these are more specific requests. Uh, and, and that's the thing with most, uh, with, with, uh, with things like SAP that are just big, massive databases, the more you, limitations you put here, um, the more limitations you're going to get back. So if you really restrict it, um, and you, you may want to, for sure, uh, you're going to get restricted inventory of our data back. I personally like to go big and then narrow it down. I just find it's an easier way to work. Take the things out you don't need uh, instead of adding the things you need after the fact. Everybody has their own way of working. Uh, that just happens to be to be mine. Um, let's see, anything else? Really? Yeah, again, negative stocks only. Uh, you should almost, not almost, you should never have negative stocks. Um, but at some point in time, it was probably a request to have that added. And that's what I mean about SAP being ever-evolving um, and, and just built upon. So that's why the within SAP, not everything is perfectly streamlined and follows the same thing. Uh, for some exports, you may be able to export to Excel with a little icon. Sometimes you'll have to go up here and do a list export. Uh, there's some transactions that are very complicated to export. And it's all because SAP is just ever evolving, keeps getting built upon. So you have these little little quirks uh, that you need to navigate. Um, but it is important to know, though, if the information is there, you'll you'll get it out. So here we go. Stopped running. Uh, and again, this this layout is because I created this layout and called it, you know, the backslash uh, quality MB fifty two. And this is it. So here's your inventory screen now. If you want to export this to Excel for this particular layout, you're going to go to list, you need export and spreadsheet, and then you're going to export this to Excel or if you're using something different, you know, whatever. Uh, but that's how you export it out to Excel. And then uh, the blue circle is going to do its thinking. Um, and then once it gets to the end, it's just going to ask you to where you want to save it to and what you want to call it. Uh, I'm not going to wait for this to run. I just want to wait to the end here so you can see the output. And yeah, that's it. Pretty straightforward. Um, I like doing these videos. I think it's so uh, you can see what's going on instead of just following a lesson and trying to figure it out. And uh, yeah, that's it for this one. Uh, right after this, I'm going to create another one. And uh, I will share that as well. Thanks. Hope you enjoyed it. Hope you learned something. Please reach out. Thank you so much.